Hey guys, welcome back to my blog. This is my third project, and in this, uh, we are gonna talk about how to interface um, an RF module with any of the projects. So let's get started. Okay, so um, this is the RF module uh, that I've been speaking about. Say uh, you want. Um, uh, to communicate something to a device in any of the projects that you make wirelessly okay so you have uh, let's say you have a controller in your hand and uh, you have say an RC car and you want to control it wirelessly so the RF technique I mean you know the, the radio frequency um, communication technique is one such technique where you can wirelessly communicate with a device okay so it's a one-way transmit uh, transmission which means that data can be transmitted only in one direction it's like you have a transmitter in your hand and there will be a receiver at a certain point and you can communicate between in the like you know you you can you can send data between these two and the data will be sent from the transmitter to the receiver but uh, the what do you call vice versa that's not possible so as I've mentioned above about the encoder and decoder, I guess the concepts are clear regarding that. I just want to demonstrate the working of this. So I used uh, Proteus software in order to simulate the circuit. But the thing is, uh, the HD2LA and the HD2LD 2 to plus C2L series encoders and decoders are not available. But there are ICs, uh, namely M145026, which acts as an encoder. And the M145027, which uh, like what performs, like which um, does the task of what uh, what the HD2LD decoder does. But the only thing is uh, uh, the the connections, like you know, the the capacitor and the resistors we connect. So just ignore this because this is the this is the like you know, the things have to be connected in this fashion in order to make these ICs work. But as I've told already, as I've mentioned in the above slides. And if you want to work with HD2LD or HD2LD, you just follow um, the connections that I've already mentioned above. It's just like you'll have an oscillator and uh, you, you don't have to connect any capacitors. You just have to connect the resistor of the of, of, of the mentioned resistance above. So that will be enough. So don't get confused. This is just a demonstration video. So this is the transmitter, the transmitter module and this thing is the receiver and this being the encoder and this being the decoder but some things are always are similar like the address pins see the a1 a2 a3 a4 and a5 pins over here they represent the address right uh, or as i've mentioned about clearly says it, it, it clearly says that the decoder should have the same address in order to so that the transmitter transmits the data to the particular receiver so we've set the address to be 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000. And at the decoder, we have set the same address for the pins A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. We grounded them, which means that uh, we are matching the addresses of the encoder and decoder. So that transmission will be possible. And the, and the rest of the connections are just the same as mentioned above. The D out pin, the data that is converted. See, the data is given parallelly uh, to the encoder. All are given at a time. All uh, you know, five address bits plus four data pin, data bits. So to overall, a total of nine bits is given to this encoder, and all all that parallel data is converted into serial format via the pin D out to the to the transmitter, and the receiver receives it, right? And uh, the data received at the receiver will be given to the D in pin of uh, the decoder, okay? And the decoder takes the serial data, and um, outputs the data parallelly okay so first when you receive the data the decoder like the, you know it, it checks for the address matching if the address matches between the encoder and the decoder then the transmission is possible obviously the vt pin over here is connected to an led uh, in order to check whether transmission is taking place or not and the te as as mentioned above the te bar pin uh, is connected to ground in order to enable transmission and um, when you use HD2LD and HD2LD, since they are 2 to the power 2L series encoders and decoders, they send 12 bits of data at a time. 
so, right so out of which eight are address pins eight are address bits eight bits represent the address and four bits represent data okay so whenever you um, uh, connect this thing to ground the te bar pin to ground okay that's so the transmission is enabled and four bits of data are transferred at a time okay so that's how it works so four 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 bits at a time are transmitted i hope uh, i hope that's clear so um yeah i want to talk about the antenna okay uh, i just want to mention a point over here without the use without the usage of an antenna okay in the in, in this particular complete module okay so, so, and uh, okay um, just let's start in this way first of all whenever you're using an rf module the communication takes place via radio waves so the radio waves are generated inside the transmitter and they're received at the receiver and they're demodulated uh, the modulation demodulation techniques i already told you above okay um, so the data i mean sorry the the uh, the radio wave is transmitted via the antenna so when you don't use an antenna the the ra the maximum range between the transmitter and receiver so that the communication takes place is 3 meters that's the that's the maximum distance that should be uh, that, that that should be present between the transmitter and receiver in the absence of antenna but in the presence of antenna it can be extended up to 100 meters so it depends upon the antenna say let's see you can use uh, a, a normal wire a conductor as an antenna so maybe that might limit the distance to 20 to 30 meters but say in the place of that you use a proper coil of uh, the above mentioned length which is nearly 17.3 centimeters then that might even more further increase the distance so it completely depends upon the antenna that you use uh, the main advantage of uh, using this communication is it's one way okay and um, other thing is you can use it uh, uh, for longer distance like you know you, uh, you can use it for uh, longer separation i mean like you know like this so you can use it for a range of uh, say I, as i've mentioned nearly 100 meters i mean the like maximum range can be nearly 100 meters but when it comes to bluetooth blue you know when you're using bluetooth okay um the distance between the bluetooth devices um should not exceed a max of 10 meters that is a restricted um distance between the bluetooth devices that too that that distance is in the absence of obstacles so when there are obviously when there are obstacles uh, the signal strength decreases so obviously the distance the maximum distance that should be present present between devices will also decrease same is the case with the transmitter and the receiver say there are obstacles so obviously and as i've mentioned the maximum distance should not exceed 100 meters in the presence of a proper antenna but that is theoretical uh, say you have obstacles obviously the distance willing the distance the maximum distance uh, that should that is allowed or that is possible for communication will obviously decrease in the presence of obstacles right so i hope that's clear i just want to show the working of this okay so you can clearly see that this led is switched on already uh, because okay which says that uh, the communication is taking place between the transmitter and the receiver why won't it because we, we we've provided the same address uh, for the encoder and the decoder right so obviously the decoder decodes that address and it, okay and it says okay so i have i i have the same address as that of you so the transmission is possible right so um and these are the four data pins and obviously uh, since we've grounded the te bar pin transmission will take place so that is why uh, the led is switched on over here so now uh, all the data pins we are set we are sending are zeros right we have set them all to zeros then now let's set this thing to one so you clearly see the LED over here is switched on. Now let's switch this on. The second LED gets switched on. The third one and the fourth one. Now let's switch. Let's send a zero via this pin. This LED is switched off. You see, we are sending this zero zero data or the zero bit via the D9 pin. Which like, no, like what is the thing that we can we can um, see? The corresponding D9 pin over here is uh, like, you know is uh, set to uh, logic zero. Right, so that's how it happens. Say at, at D8 pin, if you set it to zero, so obviously at the decoder, the D8 pin, um, a zero will be appearing at the output of the D8 pin. So now this is how it works. I hope it's clear. Um, and uh, if you guys have any doubts, you can comment in the comment sections below. Thank you so much.